Hi, and welcome to my YouTube channel where you learn everything about analytics, automation, and productivity. In this video, let's learn how to make an HTTP post request from Postman to Power Automate. Wait, what is an HTTP request in the first place? By the way, this video will help you as a non programmer to be able to work with a programmer, you know, sort of citizen developer working with fusion developer, I mean, pro developer making a fusion development team. All right, so what is an HTTP request method? An HTTP request is actually a request being made by a client, someone, or a system to a named host. So you are sending a request to a particular host which is on a server. And the aim of the request is to assess a resource on that server. You know, we want to send, just like API communication, you want to send a request to retrieve something, or you want to send a request to create something, send a request to update something, read, delete, all the crude activities, you can perform that with an HTTP request. You know, finally, you can talk, you know, you can actually up your game as a citizen developer. Let's look at a use case, for example. All right, so we have a team and there's this thing that marketing team are saying that all registration, you know, the company wants all registration to take place on our website for an event. All registration should take place on our website. And the marketing team said, uh, we need real time access to the data, either in SharePoint or Microsoft Excel. We need to know, you know, we don't need technically to connect to database. I just need to have access to it. I want to use Microsoft form. He said, no, that let it be on the form on the website. Um, and it's becoming an issue. Okay, the form on the website, but how do you get me the data real time in Excel or SharePoint at least? You know, as a business or citizen developer, I'm there. And all I can say is this, um, you can actually make, you can speak to the programmer and tell the guy, the developer that, can you make an HTTP post request upon submission of the registrant data to database and then you know pass the information to me. I can extract it and get it populated on an Excel or even a SharePoint list real time as requested by the marketing team. Wow, that sounds techy. But everybody look at you, wow, okay, this guy is going to solve it now. What just happened here is a citizen developer you working with a pro developer, the developer of the site, and that makes a fusion development. So it's simplified. Whenever people fill the form and click on submit button, just make an HTTP request post wherever you are, pass those details to me, I'm going to collect it. And I will extract the information, I will put it where it should be, and the team will be fine. So let's create a scenario uh, to actually come up with this. So we're going to create a power to make flow and also learn more about this trigger so first i'm going to come up here to create then i'm going to create automated cloud flow i'm just going to skip this i'm going to skip this and i will look for search for trigger http request note this is a premium connector so you will need um, to have the license to be able to use it a power user power automate power flow license or per user license to use this uh, but i'm on the 90 days trial of course that's a good thing there you can actually try it out you can click on it and start the trial all right so what i'm going to use here is when an http request is received and that is the connector and the trigger that i'm going to use here but then i'm going to click on this show advanced options and we we'll see this thing called method what method do i need so let's talk about the method first the get from the word get get is used to request data from a specified resource and it's one of the most common http methods so if someone posts a get the request coming is coming to us to supply something as a response that is how it is but if it is a post let's just look at get and post a post is used to send data to a server you know either to create or to update a resource for example in our scenario we need a post the post is okay uh, when that data is being submitted on the site you want to you know make a post that okay push this data to whoever you know is at the other hand so that they can make use of the information and that is it 
so right here i have it so uh post is what we're going to use patch is like making an update so patch allows you to make updates and delete allows you to also delete okay so i'm going to change this to post as you can see we don't have a url here and we don't have a schema so it's very important that how do we define this schema so i'm going there you won't be able to get the url uh until you save and you cannot save a flow with just a trigger so you have to add a step to it so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to add a compose as simple as compose action which i'm going to delete later just so that i can get that particular thing that i need uh here i can put um utc now you know just to insert something uh, input UTC now, then I can click on save. So now that I've saved this, I will be able to, if I click on this guy now, then it has generated a post URL. This is the URL that I'm going to take to Postman for posting. So I'm going to copy this URL and let's go over to Postman to understand these things better. Right here, we are inside Postman. Postman is an application used for API testing. It is an HTTP client that tests HTTP requests, you know, utilizing a graphical user interface, you know, through which you can obtain different type of responses that need to be subsequently validated. So right there, we can give it a test. Rather than using a website, we can rather try it out with, you know, Postman. And that's what I'm going to do here. So when you go to your browser, you can download Postman either for the you know macbook or for windows and when you register you get you know this workspace it could be your workspace that could be the primary workspace you are which is my workspace now i want to create more workspaces you know on that home you will see your workspace or other workspaces just click on my workspace wherever you get landed you can click on this tab here and that is where we're going to make our http request as simple as that as it is we are making a post, don't forget, so you make sure it match what you are doing. So I'm going to just go here and click on post. See a lot of different requests that can be made through Postman, but we are interested in post. And I'm going to post that URL here. Remember, we copy that from um, Power Automate. Then I will go to body. I will click on raw. And I will change it from test to JSON. All right, another thing here, JSON, what is JSON? JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. JSON is a text format for storing and transporting data. It is very self-describing and easy to understand. It has its own framework, which I'm going to write one now. So we are trying to mimic our website, assuming someone has saved you know, has filled the form and maybe registration form, just few details are, collect, are being collected and click on submit button and we just want to make a HTTP post request. So right here, I'm going to write a JSON and I'm going to start from the beginning so that you see, I'm not going to paste anything. Now I open uh, a curly bracket and I close it because Postman is helping to auto complete that. I'm going to press enter to give it a break. So it's already helping you with the identification as well. Then to declare in is just like a dictionary you are declaring variable and the value at the front so but because full name i'm going to call this full name um let me put this a full name so this full name i'm going to put a colon so what is the full name here i'm going to put my name this is my name and i come to the back here press comma enter next line about gender these are the variables that we want to collect from that registration and for the person that has filled now zoom in i have filled this male gender comma the next is email email i see i can just put one of my email z gmail.com country yeah let's talk about country then I'm gonna say Nigeria, comma, and the last variable here is how did you hear about us? So is a question at the front, okay? From friend, I got to know about you from a friend. 
from the friend. So maybe the option we don't know here how it come about. You know, I mean we don't know how the response come about. Maybe it's an option or it's an open ended file, uh, open ended you know question. But let us assume it's an option and whatever the person select, that is what is being returned. So if the programmer or the developer is making that request from the site. So he's going to just make sure that everything is coming as a JSON, then pass it to the HTTP, the URL that we have. So we have this, and the reason why we are trying to make this call first, remember if I go back here, is we don't know the request uh, schema body. I can post that schema now and make it here, but I want to make a post, so that we see from that post and then copy it. Now that I have my schema body, which has been defined within um, here, I'm going to click on send. So it's sending, it returned here. Nothing is successful actually because uh, it's not a get. So that is, there's nothing we have defined to say, okay, when you send this, collect this back to be sure maybe you are successful or not. So right here, how do we then know maybe this is successful or not? So I'm going to go back here. And you will see it ran and it was successful. It ran and it was successful. Let's click on it. And when you open up the HTTP post, I can see the body. So it's the same thing that I've composed in my, uh, what do you call it, my postman. So I can copy this. So I'm assuming that we do not know what the schema looks like. So just tell the developer, make a post now. When the person make a post, okay, you grab it from there, then you build the, what do you call it, now you build the flow. So let's go back and edit our flow. So now that we have this, this is my um, request JSON schema. I'm going to use sample to generate, paste this, which is what we know now. Click on done. So it will help you to put it up into object properties and the rest. That is fine. That's fine. Now that we have this, then I don't need this compose again. I only needed it to be able to be sure that I can, I can save the flow the other time. The next is to use pass JSON. So there's an action called pass JSON. It allows you to work with a data operation, be able to pass a JSON object through it and split it out. And you can use individual elements that are part of that JSON. So what is the content is the body, body coming from what we have called. Imagine, you no, know, we can even see everything right here. Uh, I mean, honestly, I don't think I need to use the JSON again because I see everything I need now. But I just, you know, pass it through the, the uh, JSON. So this is the body generate sample. I'm going to paste that same schema, click on done, to split it like this, I'm fine. The next step for me is to send, um, create item rather. So create item on the SharePoint. So I've created the SharePoint backend, which is on the application. And this is it. It has all the fees that have been collected. Right, so I'm just going to come back here and select it is on the application and call reg list, reg list. Okay, so title, title is the name actually, so I can see the full name, you can see it here as well. So I can take it, I can pick from any of these, but just to show you how the past JSON can also help you to, you know, split and get those items. All right, so full name is the same thing as title, I renamed the title feed, gender, I can put gender there. Email address, I'm going to put email for country. I'm going to put country. How did you hear about us? I'm going to put how did you hear about us? Save. And that is fine. So I'm going to make that post again. I'm back to postman. Yeah, let me send it first. Send again. Send a request. This request now is successful. That Because that is the trigger. Once it received this, once it sent this request to that trigger, it get the flow triggered. And it's working. So when I come back here uh, on this SharePoint um, list now, I should see the data, but if I refresh, in case it's not loading, uh, if I refresh here, you see the records are here already. So let's make another post and you know, so that I can have at least two or three records. Um, this I'm going to call Ola, you know, Ola Charles. Um, yeah, I mean, email this time around. Mary, Ola Charles, gmail.com, Nigeria, yes, from the friend. I'm going to say LinkedIn. Here, I'm going to say LinkedIn. 
LinkedIn, Mail, Yami, Journal. Let's just push this. I'm gonna push one more again. For, that one has gone. Another, I'm gonna say advance, you know, female. I just, I just something, something really. Advance. I just put this there. United States. These are fictitious, actually. Uh, is it from LinkedIn or from Facebook? I'm gonna make this post as well. So we have three responses. Good. Here it is. As a citizen developer, you might not be a pro developer, but there are still some of these concepts that you can easily leverage on. For example, now, anytime you hear HTTP request, you don't be afraid and maybe run away from it as if it's something really um, technical that you cannot learn. The way it works is like an API call. So simple. See how we've used it to be, to solve this challenge. I can see that of all our charts at advance has also dropped, you see. And if you export this, it's synchronizing to this SharePoint. The marketing team can have access to the SharePoint or even use the exported Excel, which updates real time at the same, you know, for their own purpose. So what then happened here? We are done. Let me just call it HTTP post request so that I can save this properly and that is it I'm gonna save so it runs and is there that is the trigger anytime it receive through that URL details anytime it receives a post request you know it then capture those details of course the details are available to consume immediately you may not even use the past JSON and just go straight away and create item and that is all you want to send anything back you can also add another one, maybe another HTTP request that makes a, um, a, a, a post again. This time I'm maybe back to that um, URL that it came from. But you see, it's helpful to know how this works. There are a lot of use cases uh, depending on where you are. And the moment you hear something that has to do with maybe HTTP request, just know it's not too difficult. It's something you can learn. It's something that is possible. Um, this demo video might help you to get started you know of course I encourage you to test this so you see how it connect Wow and going forward be hoping to work with fusion de uh, pro developers anything they are doing as long as they can expose it as API you can consume it as long as they can make it as a HTTP request post you can actually consume it so that should be um, I mean the the, the coming together the coming point okay so thank you always for the support if you have any question let me have it in the comment section what other ways can we you know expand on these use cases do let me know in the comment section as well thank you and bye for now